It's really important to me that I own my own IP, so I want to make sure I buy my barcode. Huh? I definitely don't want to have any issues with copyright in the future, so I want to make sure I buy my Library of Congress number. What? Yes, these are things I've actually heard from authors on their way to self-publishing, so today I'm going to be breaking down for you the difference between your ISBN, copyright, Library of Congress number, and barcode, because they are all different, they do different things for you, and they should not be used interchangeably. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author and independent publisher. I love sharing my insights about all things self-publishing with you. Before I get started on today's topic, don't forget to hit subscribe. You'll be notified every time I put out new videos about self-publishing, making a career out of being an author, and now about being a mompreneur. I've seen a lot of questions on this, on comments on this channel, direct messages that I get from authors and author forums, and I'm going to set the record straight today for these very different items um, that are very important to the technical setup for your book, uh, your ISBN, your Library of Congress control number, your copyright, and your barcode. I've done videos on each of these topics individually, and I'm going to link to those above and down below in the description, but I really want to make sure that you understand what each of these are. You're going to hear about these a lot along your self-publishing journey. So you're going to see people saying, you know, very vehemently, I want to own my ISBNs. That's something I've advocated for on this channel. I want to make sure I register for my copyright. Um, I want to make sure I have my Library of Congress number. Um, and then people are going to be talking about their barcodes. Um, and so I want to make sure you understand what each of these are. They are all different and they should never be used interchangeably. Okay, so for starters, I'm going to be reviewing this based on what U.S. United States based authors are going to need to get these items. That's because I live in the U.S. This is my experience um, and I want to make sure that I'm speaking to what I know. Um, I know many of you who watch this channel are from the U.K., Australia, elsewhere in the world. Um, most of what I'm saying about these different elements will apply, but where you get them may vary. Um, and I'm actually thinking about doing a series of videos that caters to these different countries. So definitely drop in the comments below where you're watching from um, and what country you would love to see me uh, redo this video for specifically to where you are going to be getting your ISBNs, barcodes, etc. I'd love to be able to help out my international viewers too. Now, I do talk about all of these things in self-publishing for the first-time author, um, but I'm going to be going into much more detail today. I'm probably actually going to revise this in a year or two um, with a second edition to have all these additional details, but this video is going to give you everything that you need. So in the U.S., you get your ISBN from Bowker. Um, that's B-O-W-K-E-R, Bowker. Um, it's kind of a silly name, but that is where you get your ISBN. Your barcodes, you can actually get from multiple sources. I've always ended up purchasing mine from Bowker when I've needed them, but there are different free resources. I'm actually going to be trying those out um, probably in the next couple months. So I might be doing a video here soon on the channel that talks about all the different places you can get your barcodes. Um, your Library of Congress control number in the U.S. comes from the Library of Congress, um, which is a very specific function uh, within the U.S. government that is just for um, books. And then you get your copyright from the U.S. Copyright Office. Now, I'm going to be talking about the difference between the Library of Congress and the U.S. Copyright Office, but they are two different entities within our government. Yes, lots of layers of bureaucracy and red tape, but they are two totally separate divisions. All right, so that's it. Those are the organizations, um, and I have screenshots for you in this video of what their login pages look like as of today when I'm recording this. I want you to pay really close attention to this because there are companies out there that have very official sounding names that are not these organizations at all. All. Um, they'll say something like library of books registry in the United States or congressional library um, or something like that. That has nothing to do with the official websites. So all of their links and the screenshots of what the login pages look like are in this video. All right, so let's start out with the ISBN. So your ISBN is the social security number for your book. Um, so this is the 13 digit code, it used to be 10 digits, that uniquely identifies your book and the format. So using an example of one of my books, The Infinite Infinite, right? So I have it in paperback, I have it in hardcover, 
I have it in ebook and audiobook. So total, that is four different formats for one book. So I have four different ISBNs for that book because the ISBN identifies the title um, and the format. So one, two, three, four formats, four ISBNs, okay? Um, now in the US, Bowker is the only licensed seller for ISBNs, which means that if you're going through another website to buy an ISBN, that website is going to be the publisher of record. Um, so when I own my ISBNs, my LLC is on there. Now you don't need an LLC to get your ISBNs. You can just have it be your your legal name. Your um, you could have it be your pen name. Um, and again, I've talked about setting up an LLC for your business in a previous video, but um, it identifies it to you when you own it. If somebody else has purchased it and they are selling it to you, they are still the publisher of record. Um, there is no resale option on ISBNs. They are literally just saying, we're going to assign one of our ISBNs to your title, but they still own it. Um, you may be able to get this transferred. Um, I had uh, somebody that I was speaking to said that she reached out to Bowker and they were happy to transfer it to her, um, but I wouldn't say that that's a guarantee. I've only heard of that happening once. Um, so my recommendation from this channel, as you've seen on my other videos, I always recommend that you purchase your ISBNs, you own them um, directly because then you can take them anywhere. If you're getting the free ISBN from a, from a print on demand service, they are the publisher of record. Okay, so we have in this example, four formats, for ISBNs. Now, in this case, we're going to now talk about the Library of Congress number. Now, when I decided, hey, I want my books to be available in libraries here in the United States, I need to have a Library of Congress number or an LCCN. So Library of Congress control number. Um, you'll hear a lot of people just call it Library of Congress number. Um, this is a free program free. It should cost you nothing but a couple minutes to fill out this information. Um, you should not pay one cent to anybody to get a Library of Congress control number. When you submit the information, you're going to have to fill out all the same things you did for your ISBN, right? So that's your author name, book description. You're going to put in the ISBNs associated with the book. So in this case, even though I have four ISBNs for this book, hardcover, paperback, audiobook, ebook, I only have one Library of Congress control number for for this title. Um, and that's because we want that to be the same um, on there. So when you get this back, you're going to submit all the information. Again, it's free. You're going to receive an email back that will have a string of numbers in it, no letters. Um, and I have a screenshot of the email that you'll see right here. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I've spoken to authors who've said that they bought their Library of Congress control number and they got a certificate in the mail. You will never need to purchase anything to get this number and they don't mail you anything. In fact, they actually ask that you mail them a copy of the book. Um, and I've talked about that in some previous Library of Congress videos. Um, so that's very important to know separate. Okay, so the next one is your copyright. Now I've talked about copyright in other videos. And the key thing I want to reiterate here is that as of today, um, the US Copyright Office is the only entity in the US where you should pay to register for your copyright, not the Patent and Trademarks Office, not some made up company that has the word copyright in it and sounds official, the US Copyright Office, it is a .gov website, if you're going to a .com, .net, .books, whatever it is not the right website it is a gov website because it is affiliated with the u.s government the fee to register for your copyright is 65 dollars it's not cheap now some of you watching this may think oh 65 dollars that's nothing but for you first-time authors who are like well i just spent a couple hundred bucks on the cover and a couple thousand on editing and okay i have this program and this program oh that's adding up really quickly $65 is not cheap, but what I will say to you is just like the Library of Congress number, you have one copyright registration for the creative work for the book. So again, even though this book has four ISBNs assigned with the different formats, it would only have one copyright registration for the creative work. Um, so you only need to do that once for that book, not by format. 
So I've gone into the reasons why someone might register their copyright before. Um, and when you register with this office, you will get an email confirmation and a receipt. So it says, hey, here's the receipt for the $65 you paid. Here's a confirmation email that we received your request. You will get a certificate in the mail when the application is approved. Um, with that, you will have a copyright number. Now it's alphanumeric, so usually there's two letters at the front and then a bunch of numbers. So that's how that should look. Um, it takes a while. Um, I know last year in 2020, both the Library of Congress and the Copyright Office were backlogged with a lot of uh, delays. Uh, 2020 was just the year of delays for everybody. Um, so that was one thing to keep in mind. The copyright registration takes a while, whereas the Library of Congress, they say it can take up to six weeks. I've never seen it take longer than a week, week and a half tops. Um, copyright, I have seen it take a while for that to come through. So pack your patience. So I want to go back to when I was talking about the Library of Congress number. Now, I've had some people tell me that they bought their Library of Congress number and got a certificate with an alphanumeric code. Whenever this has happened, I've asked them to clarify if it is their Library of Congress control number or their copyright registration. Again, these are not the same. So the reason why you would want to get a Library of Congress control number is that you want your book to be available in public libraries in the United States. They require that you have the Library of Congress control number assigned to the book so it can match up with their systems. That's literally it. That's the only reason you would need that is if you want to be in libraries. If you don't want to be in libraries, why wouldn't you want to be in libraries? But if you don't want to be in libraries, you don't need that. The copyright registration is an extra step to protect your creative work. Now in the US, the second that you type something into your computer, it is copywritten. It belongs to you. But the copyright registration just gives you another layer of if there were to be a dispute, which hopefully there isn't, you can say, hey, on this date at this time, I registered my copyright. Here's what it looked like as of this date because you do have to submit a digital version of it. And here is the exact code that I received back. Um, it's that extra protection. These two things are not the same at all. If you have a Library of Congress control number, that does not mean that you have a copyright registration number. Copyright registration number does not mean that you are in the Library of Congress. They're separate. So the final item that I want to talk to you about today is barcodes. Um, and originally when I started scripting this video, I was just going to talk about the first three, but then I realized there were a lot of confusion. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion out there about barcodes. So I've seen and heard people use this term interchangeably with ISBNs, and that leads to some really bad advice going out into the world. So your barcode is on your print book, your printed books only. Um, and it's just like any other barcode that you would see out there in the world. So this is on books at retail stores, it's on bags of almonds, it's on the tags on your clothes that you buy. Barcodes are just how point of sale is able to quickly scan so they can see the price, they can remove it from their inventory. Um, so the barcodes has a lot of information in it. Now for your book, you have the option to have your price listed on the barcode. Now again, if your plan is to get your book into brick and mortar stores, you definitely want to have the price on the barcode. If that's not your plan, you don't have to worry about that it can just be the the base you know, no price on there now for books you will have your ISBN on the barcode however that does not mean that it is any in any way associated with you owning your ISBN it is just printed on there if you were to get the no cost barcode from KDP or Ingram Spark they're still going to put the ISBN that you've input onto the barcode um, bar, so yes an ISBN will be on a barcode but Barcodes have nothing to do with you retaining your IP and being the publisher of record. That is only on the ISBN. And again, I think that's where some of the confusion comes from. So I've had people ask me how they can make sure they own their barcode to protect their IP. Nope, not a thing. I've had people comment on my videos and online posts that ebooks don't need ISBNs. Nope. Ebooks don't need barcodes um, because they're never scanned at point of sale. I understand that Kindle is out there saying that for Kindle books, they don't need ISBNs um, because they're giving it to you for free. They're just giving you an ASIN, which I'll probably do another video on that's just specific to Amazon. In my opinion, is it your book? Okay, it needs an ISBN. Um, so that's one thing that I have seen out there that I think comes from this misunderstanding between barcodes and ISBNs. 
yes, ebooks never pass over a point of sale scanner. They don't need a barcode. The barcode has nothing to do with your IP. Um, ebooks don't need barcodes. They need ISBNs. Um, if you decide that you want to put the price on your barcode, you can purchase those from Balker for $25 um, or your cover designer may be able to generate one for you if you just ask. Again, I'm probably going to be testing out some of these free um, barcode generators later. Okay, so how does this help you as an author? Well, first, it's good to be super specific about what you are registering for, um, what the time frame is, what it's going to cost you, and why you need it. There is no one-stop shop that does all of this for you as a self-publishing author. Traditional authors, yep, that's what your publishing house does for you. Um, but when you self-publish, you need to be responsible for this information and these transactions. If you ever have a question about if you are on the correct site or if you're about to buy a package with all of this done for you, that sounds too good to be true, please send me a message. Reach out. Ask an author in a Facebook group or forum. Ask before you buy. It will probably take at most a day to get a confirmation that you are on the right place doing the right thing uh, and not about to throw money at something that doesn't help you. I know when you finally like the book is done, I just want it out. There is often this rush, just get it done, get it done, get it done. You didn't just spend all this time writing this book just to rush through these really important technical details. So please take your time, ask questions. Okay, so this one was definitely a bit longer and more detailed, but I really just can't stand it when authors are getting duped or tricked or taken advantage of during what's already a really confusing and challenging process. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. That lets YouTube know that you're getting value from this information and can get it in front of other authors like us. And now you can get back to writing your book. Hey, if you want to continue to support this channel and my other creative work, please head over to buymeacoffee.com and support my channel. You can buy me one coffee, three, five, ten, or you can even get a membership. Those who are in the membership are actually going to be included in the acknowledgments pages of all of my published books moving forward as a big thank you. And you can even get some additional options to get an Instagram thank you post shout out or a shout out in an upcoming video. Thank you so much for supporting this channel.